it seems like we're about to go into a general community quarantine. What is your reading of the situation in Metro Manila? Are we ready to ease restrictions based on your model? Well, why don't I begin here? Um, our model predicts that the cases will increase. Oh my goodness. And, so, and I think it's really important to for everyone to, to understand that if we will, no matter when we release the lockdown, there will be a, an increase in the number of cases. But during this pandemic, what public health officials have to do is they have to do risk management. And so if you're going to increase the risk of another surge in the pandemic by releasing the ECQ or the modified ECQ here in Manila, then you have to compensate by increasing the testing and increasing the um, contact tracing so that you mitigate that risk. And so it's a matter of trying to find a balance so that we will be able to open safely. Dr. Eggwolf, what is your biggest fear in case we start easing restrictions? The biggest fear is um, that the numbers go up and grow exponentially again. So that's mm -hmm. why we really need uh, to mitigate. So we need to set up teams who can uh, trace people who are infected and that we have enough testing available so that we can test everybody who was in contact with these people who were identified as a uh, positive. Okay, the UP study has uh, disagreed with the recommendation of the Metro Manila mayors for the lifting of the quarantine, the MECQ. They think that it is a case of premature relaxation. Do you agree with that? Well, again, it's a matter of, of, of risk management. So in the United States, the basic standards for lifting the lockdown is two weeks of continuous decrease in cases, um, capacity in your hospitals, and then testing and tracing. The challenge we have in the Philippines is our data set from the DOH is not reliable. And I think Dr. Eggwolf and I discovered that in the last few weeks when we are trying to get the data from the DOH. There are several thousand cases that are still out to be validated. I understand that uh, the president has asked all the test testing centers to complete their backlog of cases right. in the next day, which is yeah. why it's not surprising that all of a sudden, if you look at the, at the COVID tracker, we have a huge spike of cases positive cases, 539 today. Right. Now, what is not clear is if it's 539 today or 539 because these are people who have been tested over the last few weeks, yes. but only now are they is there, are their results getting validated. So it's right. very hard to really know what is happening. Well, since, since we all know precisely that the turnaround time uh, between testing and results is so long. We also know that there will be an artificial rise yet to come. Uh, and you have your projections for how exponential it will be. Would you recommend the lifting of ECQ now? Well, I, I think my, my view is, uh, given given what we have, are we ready to... to to deal with potential spikes and clusters of cases, especially in Quezon City and Manila in the next three weeks? And, and, and that is the question you have to pose to the public health authorities, right? Because they are the ones who, who actually are, who know, who are on the ground. And I have heard, again, I'm not part of the official conversation, and I've heard that there are efforts to rank the risk of the barangays in Metro Manila so that certain barangays will be actually on ECQ while the rest will be yes. modified. Yes. Mm. So you see, even there, even there, uh, that yeah. sort of approach to lifting the modified ECQ will moderate and mitigate the risk. So, and our model does not take into account this incredibly gradual change because very few places in the world actually do that. They pretty much, the whole area is lifted all at once. And so I, I, I am, I, you know, I am cautious about the, the lifting. I am concerned 
that the numbers, uh, especially the recent spikes, suggest that um, you know we, we don't really know what is going out there. But I've also heard that we are only at 38% capacity of hospital beds, which means mm -hmm. that the, the the positive cases and the and the hospitalizations don't quite jive. And so I'm I am much more I'm looking primarily at the number of deaths and the number of hospitalizations. And those look better than what you would think. Uh, on the other hand, Reverend, uh, in general, do you think the lockdown has worked so far? I mean, I'm gonna let, no, I'll let, I, I will let uh, Bernard answer that. Yes, Dr. Egvold, you think that yeah. the lockdowns have worked so far? And do you think if we shift to a system where in certain streets only or zones or villages will be placed under hard lockdown or whatever they want to call it, you think that will work? So for the first part of the question, I would say, yes, it was working quite well. So the lockdown was actually uh, very early. So uh, we also uh, write in our paper about two days after the first cases came up, it was already locked down. We compared it in the paper with New York. They locked down about a week after the first cases and you see a huge difference in the number of deaths so in, in Manila, in, in Metro Manila, it, it, it is, I would say it was well under control. And uh, when we compare it with New York, there they have a huge number of deaths. So I would say that the early lockdown was exactly the right thing to do. It worked and it still helps us to keep the numbers low. Um, however, um, we are just at the boundary of keeping it constant, the number of uh, infected people, it does not go down that much. So if we lift a little bit, it might already start going up again. However, as uh, Father Austriaco said, um, as long as we have enough capacity in the hospitals to uh, yeah. deal with uh, spikes going up, and as long as we uh, can mitigate uh, these effects by locally uh, shutting down barangays or by tracing, yes. uh, uh, we, we, should, we should try it. We should give it a try. Yeah. I, I would say no. yes.